Hi, I'm Thomas Sicker, the producer of Lord of the Rovers, and I'm on set with my team, The Fellowship. Thank you. My name is Michael Lilly. Take care of this. Sure. Yeah, my name is Dalit. I'm the director of the movie. I'm going to introduce you to the biggest star of our movie, Frodo and Gollum. Hi, I'm Renee Spangler, and I'm in charge of making sure our actors stay safe with the latest of technological advances. In this case, we have three ultrasonic sensors so that our actors know exactly where they are, and they have encoders so they know where they've been. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Thank you. This is our set. It is a 5x5 five five maze with configurable walls. Gollum will go through and map the maze, and then Frodo will solve the maze. Oh, hi. Uh, just getting hyped. This is the GUI. This is how we control our actors. When I hit start, it's like hitting play. So here's one of the rovers that we're using. Both rovers are identical. Uh, the rover has three main parts, which is the sensors. You can see the side sensors, front sensors. Uh, here is where the sensors are, not con are connected through the I2C. Second part is the encoder connection, which is used for motors. And the last part is definitely Wi-Fi, which is used for all the communication between PEC and PI. <clears throat> so our rover has four main threads. Those are the threads. Each thread has its own message queue through which other threads or ISR can communicate to that particular thread. Those are the message queues. On our state diagram, circles are the ISR and the rectangles are the actual hardware. So the first, first uh, thread in our system is a sensor thread. It takes care of all the sensor readings and sensor data. The thread is activated through a timer call, call bag. That timer uh, can be started and stopped in the control thread. Second thread is the UR thread. Uh, UR thread takes uh, care of all the communication between PEC and PI including receiving and transmitting any messages. For transmitter, uh, only two threads in our system can send uh, messages to Pi through your heart. First one is a sensor thread that packages all the sensor data and sends it every one second. A second uh, thread is the control thread that can package all the maze information and send it to the Pi as well. Uh, for receiving, uh, your heart thread receives all the messages by, 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 by and stores those bytes into the intermediate buffer. Once your thread uh, gets the closing character byte, it knows that the message is completely done and it can forward this control thread. And the control thread being the brain of our system processes the data and any other messages from other threads to make a next decision. It also handles uh, Frodo and Gollum mode and, and provide a motor thread with uh, movement instructions. Uh, the motor thread is obviously the thread that takes care of the, all the rover movements. It does that by receiving the uh, movement instructions from the control thread and changing the state to processing. Uh, it does not change the state from processing to the original state until the rover movement is completely done. Uh, that way we can prevent that the instructions are not overlapped or we cannot, they're not spammed. So the GUI runs on a Raspberry Pi. We chose the Python programming language because Python has a wrapper around Qt, which is a popular GUI framework. We have five main components in our GUI. We have the communication thread, the process thread, the main window, the motor test, and the adjustment window. 
The communication thread and the process thread communicate via Q. However, the main window, motor test window, and adjustment window communicate with the process thread using signals and slots, which are the mechanism that QT uses to communicate between threads. So the flow of information goes, a message will come in through the communication thread from a rover. The communication thread will figure out which rover sent it and what the information says. It will put it in the queue, and then the process thread will look for that information in the queue, get it out, process it, and then, depending on what the information is and what needs to be changed, it will send out information to the main window, the motor test window, or the adjustment window. So this is the GUI. Now you'll notice that there are status indicators as well as a picture of a rover, and then there are buttons below. The buttons below are the start and stop, as well as the motor test, the control test, and the sensor test. The dashes here that you see are where the sensor data will show up, and in the middle, while it's blank now, during operation, the maze will slowly be filled out. You'll also notice that there are two pictures of Frodo and Gollum, and the pictures of Frodo and Gollum will move throughout solving the maze. Upon completion of the mapping by Gollum, you'll be able to select one of these blocks, and that'll set the exit. And then Gollum will go there, and then shortly after, the other rover will go there. This is what it looks like when you hit the motor test. As you can see, you can go forward, left, right, and around. Those are the commands that the Raspberry Pi sends to the rovers during the course of uh, least distance path calculation. So basically, we're just simulating one of those commands. And then this is the motor adjust window. Now, the motor adjust can be done via the keyboard, and that's a little more intuitive because we can follow it around, go behind it, see whether or not it's straight. But if you use the GUI, you get small and large adjustments for the left and right directions, as well as forward and back. When you hit go, the window will close, the move will finish, and the Raspberry Pi will send information to the rover telling it that it should continue on solving the maze or going to the exit. Hi, I'm Renee Spangler, and this semester I've been in charge of the encoders. What is an encoder? An encoder is hooked to the motor so that as the motor moves, per X amount of revolution, we receive one tick. The encoders are hooked to timers three and four as an asynchronous input. This means that they are the clock that is driving those timers. And at each tick, it equates it to one clock pulse. To use this, we say, okay, we need to go X number of ticks. So we say, tell the clock, we need to go X amount per period. So we set the period. To make sure that the rovers are actually going straight, we go 40 ticks, then we stop to see how often the other timer is going. If one timer goes three times as fast, we stop it and start the other one to make sure that we're going evenly. Uh, so for vision, our rovers uses three ultrasonic sensors, one on front and two on sides. This is enough to have full awareness of the walls around it. Our sensors have a, uh, an angle of 30 degrees, about 30 degrees, and a maximum distance of 500 centimeters. Uh, the minimum distance for our sensor is about 20 centimeters, uh, which means that everything below 20 centimeters is capped as MOC at 20 centimeters. This is one of the reasons where our blocks for the maze is actually 18 inches wide. Uh, to talk to the sensors, we're using the I2C protocol, where uh, each sensor has a unique slave address, which is stored in the EEPROM, double EEPROM. Uh, so the front sensor, for our example, has uh, 222, uh, 224 for front, and uh, 220 for left sensor. Uh, the whole process is divided into uh, cycles or parts. The first part is ranging and the second part is reading. And the first part is divided into three cycles. Uh, the first part is where we send the range command to the sensors and letting them know uh, that they have to start ranging distance. The second part is where we're accessing the uh, read register in the sensors and reading the distance from it. The reason why we're dividing this uh, process into two parts is because we want to uh, eliminate any ultrasonic interference. So this is the control thread um, state machine for each rover. Um, the Gollum and Frodo are actually substates of the entire rover system. That's because the Gollum rover, as it's mapping, needs to uh, take instructions occasionally from the Raspberry Pi. Um, so as you can see here, we have our initial state. Um, once we get a signal from the Raspberry Pi, it will tell us to either enter Gollum or Frodo state. Um, then it will do its processing. If it's in Frodo state, it will accept the uh, instructions from the Raspberry Pi and then execute them. If it's in the Gollum state, it'll um, try to map out the maze until it gets lost. And when it gets lost, it'll go to Frodo state. Um, from Frodo state, it'll get instructions. And then after it's finished with the instructions, it'll go back to Gollum state until it's finished um, mapping the maze. Also, actually, um, once 
after every time the motors are finished uh, processing, um, the control state will change the state to the adjustment, the, uh, to the adjust state. Um, then the user can adjust the rover within the maze to make sure that it's uh, centered, perfectly centered in the block. Um, then they'll hit go, then it'll return to the proper state. Um, if it's at the exit, that's actually part of the uh, list of instructions from the motor, or from the Raspberry Pi. Um, so if it sees that it's at the exit from the Raspberry Pi, then it'll exit, or enter the exit state. Um, after it's finished with uh, exiting the maze, it'll reset itself back to the start state. This is our communication scheme. Every communication begins with a message header, which is in the form of the opening bracket. That's followed by a sequence ID, which is a one byte number that goes from zero to 255. Rollovers are handled on the server, so we wanted to keep it at one byte to make the message length shorter. Then there are two length bytes, which allows the length to be anything from zero to 65, 535. Then there's a designation. The designation tells us what kind of message it is. If it's a control message, that will cause it to be handled differently than if it's a sensor message. Following that is the payload. The payload is the same number of bytes as the length. And then every message is completed with a message footer, which is the closing bracket. Okay, so this is the maze solving part of our system. So um, each rover and the Raspberry Pi need to have a map of the maze to solve. So the way that works is we have a 9x5 matrix um, on each part of the system to contain a map of the maze. Um, each index of the map or each index of the matrix contains one byte, um, and the byte has status flags um, determining, or for information about each block. For example, um, each block can have a wall on the north, south, east, or west. Um, we also have two flags, one for blocks that the rover has detected, which we call the scene flag, um, one for um, where the Gaul rover has actually traveled to, that's the Bintu flag, and we also have a flag to determine uh, the exit for the maze. So basically how this works is, for the Gollum rover, when it's mapping out the maze, it'll mark its current location within the matrix as uh, been to, and then it'll also mark all the adjacent um, all the adjacent blocks it can detect with scene blocks, or it'll just put a wall in the corresponding direction that it detects a wall. For example, um, if it detects a wall on the east side of the block, um, it'll place an east wall there. Uh, the direction is based on the orientation of the maze um, for the entrance. So when the rover first goes into the entrance, it's facing east and then it's just north, south, or west. Um, basically, how, when the Gollum rover is mapping out the maze, it tries to go to every block that it has seen but not traveled to yet. Um, so basically, if the rover was right here and it has been to this block, and it's been to, but it hasn't been to this block or this block, it'll go to this block because it gives um, priority to blocks on the right over the other ones for equal distance. Um, another example would be if the rover is right here, but it knows that it hasn't um, explored this block yet, it knows to turn in that direction and then go in that direction. Um, once the Gollum rover has gone to a point where it can't detect any blocks in any direction that it hasn't traveled to yet, then that rover is lost. When it becomes lost, it'll signal the Raspberry Pi to instruct it where, where to go. Um, the Raspberry Pi will use its copy of the map and use a breadth-first search algorithm uh, to take the rover, or to provide a set of instruction, motor instructions to the rover um, based on either the exit, if there's the exit, or if the maze has been completed, or uh, to the closest block it hasn't um, traveled to yet. Uh, we determine if the maze has been completed by based on if the Raspberry Pi version of the map has any blocks that it has seen but not been to yet for the Golem. Um, if that case is true, it'll prompt the user to select an exit. Once the user selects an exit, it'll do the least distance path from the rover's current location to the exit. Um, I've also illustrated out um, the breadth first search algorithm, which basically creates a tree from the matrix. Um, so if you start right here and the exit's here, um, it starts in here and knows it can go to block two and three, and then it knows from two it can go to blocks four or five, and from three it can go to six, and it keeps on uh, filling the tree until we get to the block we're trying to look for. Once we uh, get to this block, we'll return the list of instructions, uh, motor instructions from that block to the exit block. That was our project. Thanks for watching.